Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Common Sense. You know, we've seen an unprecedented failure as far as our border security is concerned under the current administration. And exit polling from the midterms showed that this was a major concern for many Americans. And I understand that we're compassionate people. Compassion is one thing. Common sense can be quite another thing. I mean, we have homes, and many of us are very compassionate people. But do we leave the doors open and invite anybody to come into our home who wants to come in and to sleep under our roof? Uh, This is the way that we're treating our country right now. And uh, interestingly enough, when the current president was asked, would he do anything different after the results of the election? He said no. And uh, that's a problem on many levels, but it's particularly concerning when we're talking about what's going on at our borders. So, hey, hello, everyone. This is Dr. Ben Carson, and this is Common Sense with Dr. Ben Carson. And I'm here today with Tom Homan, former acting director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And uh, welcome, Tom. We're so grateful for what you've been doing. It's a real honor to have you here. We're uh, really dealing with an unprecedented situation at our southern border right now. Uh, We went from the most secure border under the previous administration to historic numbers of illegal entries now. What are the numbers now? What what exactly are we facing right now? Right now, since Joe Biden's been in office, the first full year is 1.7 illegal encounters, illegal aliens come across the border, 1.7 million. This year, he was over 2.3, almost closer to 2.4. So since he's been in office, we've had over 4 million arrests of people trying to cross the border illegally. Add to that over 1 million gotaways. And people say, well, where do you get the gotaways? How do you count gotaways? They're captured on film. They're captured on sensor traffic, drone traffic, uh, camera traffic. And Border Patrol catch the image, but they can't respond because they're so tied up with these family groups. So they record over 1 million gotaways. So altogether, there's been over 5 million illegal aliens crossing the border since Joe Biden become president, which is which blows every record out of the water. It's historic numbers. Last year at 1.7 was historic, and he beat that by another half a million. It, Unbelievable. It, that's more than some states. The population of some states is like we're adding another state uh, and, and, each year. And Ben, that doesn't even count the unknown gotaways, right? right. People, or every day, if there's not a sensor there, if there's not a drone there or, or camera, we don't know how many unknown gotaways there are. All I know is you know, and you mentioned it earlier, I worked for six presidents start with Ronald Reagan, and every president I worked for, including Obama and Clinton, both campaigned on having a secure border because they understood you can't have national security if you don't have border security. Every one of them did, took some steps to secure the border. No one did more, of course, than President Trump. We had the most secure on record low numbers. Joe Biden is the first president in history of this nation who came into office and unsecured the border. He unsecured the most secure border we ever had on purpose, not mismanagement, not incompetence, by design. And it's just, and that's why people say, well, you look awful angry when you're on Fox News or well, I'm testifying for the Congress. I do, if I take it personal. People are dying every day. And I want to just mention this one thing. What should infuriate people the most is since Joe Biden's been president, over 1,400 migrants have died on U.S. soil in the river and the desert. That is the number by far worse than ever. People who say they want about President Trump, say his, 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 his policies were inhumane. Well, let me say something. When President Trump had illegal, illegal immigration down 83%, 83% less people were making that journey, how many children didn't drown in the river? How many women didn't get sexually assaulted by the cartels? How many Americans didn't die from drug overdose deaths because drugs weren't across the border? Exactly. President Trump, say what you think. You know, He saved lives. His policies not only secured the border, but it saved lives. And, and and speaking of drugs, I mean, what are the implications of what's happening at our border with fentanyl and other drugs? Great question. And, and I'm, I've been pushing this for the last few months because a lot of people, they're, they're soft on illegal immigration. They don't see immigration as a victimless crime. Well, it's not. 
But you need to understand, regardless of what your opinion is on illegal immigration, when you cause a crisis of this historic proportions, right now, 70 to 80 percent of agents, Border Patrol agents, are no longer on the line patrolling. They're in facilities, changing diapers, making baby formula, making hospital runs, making airport runs, processing and releasing. When you've got 80, 70, 80 percent of agents off the line, that's when the fentanyl flows across. Killed over 100,000 Americans. That's when no suspected terrorists are going to cross. And this is the big issue because the Border Patrol in the last two years have arrested 116, 116 known as suspected terrorists trying to sneak into the country. I mentioned the one-man gotaways. How many of the one men can be a known suspected terrorist? Because terrorists don't want to be arrested. And, and, I, and I, I'd say this, I said this in a speech yesterday. I said, look, after 9-11, we took a lot of steps to try to prevent terrorists from coming into this country. We, we created the visa security program. We created the, the TSA no fly list. We created FBI screening database. The, the visa screening process alone, we prevented almost 10,000 known suspected terrorists from entering this country on a visa since 9-11. People that had derogatory information in their background. Those databases, even though they're important, they're less meaningful now because if I'm a terrorist and I want to get to the United States, why would I put myself in a position to be vetted to get a visa or get vetted to get an airline ticket to get here when I can simply go across the southwest border and cross like one million others did and not get arrested? There I'm making it in the country. They don't know I'm here. I never had to go through vetting. No one's got my fingerprints. No one's interviewing me. This is a huge national security issues. So I'll say it again, no matter what people think of illegal immigration, when you create a crisis this big, it creates a national security issue, a public safety issue, a public health issue because the fentanyl killing so many Americans. Yeah, well, we have no idea who these people are. And it seems to me that we have a lot of enemies in the world, uh, countries like Iran who would like to destroy us. Why wouldn't they send their operatives through that open southern border? and target things like uh, our electric grid. You know, there are 13 or 14 critical grids that the other hundreds are tied into. Why wouldn't they target those and destroy us? They absolutely would. And that's why I tell people, they say, well, home, you don't know, you can't prove no suspected terrorists enter the country. I can, say, I can look, but it's, it, I, you can play the percentage, you can play common sense. Border Patrol has arrested people from 161 different countries. Many of those countries, within 161, are sponsors of terrorism. There's over one main gotaways. If you don't think a single one of the, eight, of the one million people that, that didn't want to get arrested, they didn't want to be fingerprinted, they didn't turn themselves to the border patrol to get released and, and, and the government sends them on a, a taxpayer-funded flight to the city of their choice, who doesn't want to do that? Somebody doesn't want to be vetted. Somebody doesn't want to be fingerprinted. So if you think a single one of the one million aren't no inspected terrorists from, you know, from the country sponsored terrorism, then you're just, you're ignoring the odds, you're ignoring the obvious. I don't know how many terrorists have came across since Joe Biden become president, but I tell you this, someday we're going to find out, and it's going to be a bad day for this country. Yeah, I think it's only the grace of God that's saving us right now from uh, people who just don't seem to either comprehend that or they don't care. I'm not sure which one of those things it is, but in either case, it's pretty terrible. But, but the other issue is the human trafficking that seems like it's increased uh, significantly. Wouldn't this make it a lot easier for those people to operate? Yes, because and that's a great question. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Some of the interviews I actually forget is to talk about the, the, tra the sex trafficking of women and children. There's a couple of things people need to know. Right now, we've had over 200,000 children enter this country living by themselves as young as you know three or four years old. That just got pushed over the fence mm -hmm. and the board to arrest them. Two hundred over two hundred unaccompanied alien children entered this country since Joe Biden became president. Health and Human Services Office of Refugee Resettlement has already lost track of forty percent of them. Forty percent of them they can't find. They release them to sponsors, and now they can't locate them. That scares the hell out of me. How many of these children have been released to a a predator? Or, or, or somebody, you know, is, is going to put them in forced labor or servitude. Can I tell you what? Under President Trump, when we released the children, we vetted not only the sponsor, we vetted everybody in that household to make sure there wasn't a predator uh, uh, in that household. So we, we, we vetted everybody in the household. The Biden administration is doing minimal vetting on just the sponsor. 
uh, uh, Veritas just came out report the other day where some of these sponsors are supposedly sponsored for 40 different children, but they, the children aren't there. So right. God help us. Some of these children are obviously put in prostitution, put into some sort of sex trade or pornography or forced labor. And it's just, that breaks my heart. And the sex trafficking of women is at an all-time high. And uh, the, the investigations being done by the Bureau and, and HSI, Homeland Security Investigations, are triple what they were under Trump. And that's just what we know about. So mm -hmm. that's a great question because people need to understand when the cartels, they control our southern border, no doubt about it. They, they decide who crosses the border and when. So they'll send a group of 200 family units to a sector because they know that's going to tie the border patrol up and mm -hmm. Miles away going to come and deal with that humanitarian crisis because a lot of these people are in bad shape. So when they pull all the resources to deal with that 200 family groups, that's when the cartels send the gang members. That's when they send the fentanyl. That's when they send the trafficking of women and children. And that's when it, you know, that's when they'll send a known inspector terrorist and they want to be arrested. The, the, the scariest thing to me, that I've been doing this for 35 years. And, and like you said, in my, in my history, I started from the bottom. And I was the first ice director that actually came up to the rings. I, I, hit, I, I climbed that ladder. I hit every rung. And in 35 years, I've been ever been more concerned about the safety and security of the country as I am right now. Because yeah. there is a effect because of the children and the sex trafficking of women. And, and we're the strongest country, I think, in the entire world. We don't have operational control of our own southern border. And that just isn't my opinion. I talked to chief patrol agents who I won't name so they'll get fired. They told me they have lost operational control. One chief patrol agent says, Tom, it, 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 it's broken arrow. It's broken arrow. We cannot, I cannot contain what's coming across the border. We're maybe catching 15 to 20% because all my agents are tied up processing. Right. I don't know what's coming across the border. The criminal cartels in Mexico decide who comes and what comes and when it comes, and I can't stop it. That, that scares the hell out of me. Yeah, it's it's hard to imagine how we could have responsible people in in our government who don't recognize this and aren't taking adequate steps. I mean, we know what to do. We've we've seen that we have the ability to control this. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, it was intentional to undo all of that. Obviously, there's another agenda here. But what would be wrong with physically securing the border? you know, with a wall and with the technology and establishing, you know, a functional guest worker program where people would come in, they would register, they would pay taxes, they could come and go as long as they were legal, as long as they were abiding by the laws of the country. And if they wanted to become an American citizen, they have to go through the same thing that anybody else would go through. They don't get to jump the line. You must, what would be wrong with a system like that? You must read my book because I talk I say, look, I, I dare any anybody who's an anti-border security person, a lot of the Dems up there on, on the Hill, give me one downside on securing the border. Give me a downside. Less illegal immigration, less criminal cartels, cartels make a lot less money, less drugs coming to the country that aren't, won't be seized, less women being sexually assaulted. Doctors off borders did a study, 31% of women who make that journey with through the cartels get sexually assaulted. So less women being sexually assaulted, less children are drowning in the river, less drugs get in the country. There's no downside. So you're exactly right. Let's secure the border. Let's continue, let's, let's continue President Trump's policies that were effective, the most effective in my lifetime. And create a, if we need that type of labor, then the Department of Labor needs to come up with a system. First of all, they need to guarantee that. Let, let's say this company needs to hire 100 people to... Uh, a pick crops in California or, or, or a factory, make some sort of widgets. Department of Labor would check with that company to make sure they truly cannot find U.S. citizens to fill them jobs. And there are a lot of them. I agree. And once they verify they, they can't hire locally, they can't, there's not people that can fill them with jobs, then create a program to bring them in legally on a visa and pay taxes. And when they're done, if it's a seasonal work, like picking a crop, when they're done, they can go back home. That's called the Becerra program. And I came in I joined the board from 1984. The Becerra program ended in, I think, in 82. But every when I came in, all the board agents who were senior to me said it was a great program. They can't figure out why they ended it. So, yes, there is a way to fix this. 
then Congress needs to step up and fix it. But I'll say this, you've got to secure the border first. You've got to turn off the floodwaters. Then, mm -hmm. and, and here's the beauty of that. If they can apply for a visa and come through a port of entry, they're not drowning in a river, women aren't being sexually assaulted, and the cartels are out of business. Exactly. And the alien smuggling business. So I'm all for it, and I actually wrote about that in my book. Well, I guess it probably makes too much sense to hope that it can get done. <laughs> we just have to keep pushing it, though. This, this issue, I'd like to say I've done this since 1984. It's, it's very controversial. It's very emotional. I get it. But... And I said, and I, I've called for the, I've called for the impeachment in Mayorkas, and I said that because at what point, if they're going to impeach President Trump for making a phone call to Ukraine, they can certainly impeach uh, Secretary Mayorkas because when he was Deputy Secretary under President Obama, and I, and I, I worked for Obama too, and I, I just said Obama gave me the highest rank award possible because we did the job well. Ali Mayorkas was the Deputy Secretary at the time. The, the Secretary was Jay Johnson, who I respect greatly. Sure. Even though I didn't agree with all his policies, when there was a thousand entries a day, he called us all in and said, what the hell's going on? A thousand days, bad day. And he, he would call that a surge, a crisis. Now we got seven, eight thousand a day. The Secretary of Mayorkas says it's not a crisis. But right. in 2014, 2015, I worked very closely with Mayorkas and, and Jay Johnson. And we came, how did we stop the crisis in 1415? We built detention facilities. We detained people and made them see a judge. And nine out of ten lose their case because they simply don't qualify for amnesty. They're really not escaping fear and persecution from the whole government. They're coming here for a better life. I get that, but it's not asylum. So the nine out of ten lost their case. We put them on an airplane and sent them home. And guess what? The border numbers tanked. What is Secretary Mayorkas doing now? He's not detaining them. They're releasing without seeing a judge or a court date. And ICE can't arrest them even if they lose their case because Secretary Mayorkas is on record saying this. Being in the country illegally on his own is not enough reason to be arrested. Uh, Tom, you were you were talking about uh, Secretary Mayorkas. Um, there's been a call for his impeachment at the highest level. Um, do you think there's a chance that could happen? There's only been one secretary who's ever been impeached. That was like in... 1876. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, I was asked that question the other day when I was doing the show. And I says, well, it has to. And, and if, at least through the oversight hearings, like, like uh, the speak, uh, future Speaker Mark Carthy said, have oversight hearings, subpoena the right people, subpoena the right information. And I told the GOP, I'd work with them. Uh, you know, I've done this for 35 years. I know where the bodies are buried. I know where they can find you know, the information, because if they do it right, they subpoena the right people, subpoena the right information, there's going to be a lot of damning information that Secretary Mayorkas knowingly did this. You know, of course, with the push from the White House and, and violate all the offices he's taken. And people say, that's pretty serious to impeach somebody. I said, at what point is it enough to impeach somebody? Over 100,000 Americans are dead from a drug that the DEA says 95% has come across the southwest border because 70-80% of border places is off the line. Is, it, is, is, is 1,400 dead migrants in U.S. soil enough? Is 100,000 dead Americans enough? Is, 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 the, amount of, is, is the, the amount of known suspected terrorists coming across that border enough? Is, is the fact that the United States of America do not, does not have operators to control their southern border, is that enough? It, it, you know, at what point? Is it enough? I really believe this is a national security issue that can be stopped. And, and it, it disappoints me, it angers me that Secretary of Homeland Security has every, every data point I've given you in the last 15 minutes, he has. So as a Secretary of Homeland Security, at what point does he say, look, White House, I understand you're pushing this open border slam, but I can't support it anymore because it's created a national security crisis that puts this country in great danger. I can't, I'm the Secretary of Homeland Security. I cannot do this. Either he resigns, steps up and does something, but he just he's ignoring it. And I'm telling him, God help us, what's going to happen down the road. So I think it's enough. And, you know, will he actually get in peace and get removed? Probably not. But the American people, once you get those subpoenaed information out, they're going to see the truth behind what's going on here. And this is excellent. They're working with open borders groups, NGOs are making billions of dollars. And for one instance, they pay this one company, Endeavors, 
They gave them a multi-million dollar contract. They spend $374 a night per alien to put them in a hotel room. ICE, Immigrants Customers Force, the ACA used to run right now. They have thousands of empty beds already paid for by the taxpayers sitting empty. Mm-hmm. Rather than putting them in that bed that costs you $100, again, already paid for, they're going to leave them empty and put them in a hotel room at $370 a night. And why are they doing that? This is probably the most important thing I'm going to say in this interview. Why is this administration not detaining people? Because of two things. Number one, I said it earlier, the immigration court data, if you look at it, let's take Central Americans, for instance, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, and we'll put Mexico in there. Immigration court data says 86.9%, you know, 87% of Central Americans who claim asylum at the border never get relief from U.S. courts because they either don't show up or they don't qualify. That's nearly 9 out of 10. Mm-hmm. What happens out of that 9 out of 10 to get ordered removed by the immigration judge? If you look at the Homeland Security Lifecycle Report, which is a, a data collection for the last decade, Homeland Security Lifecycle Report says, well, if you're a UAC, a child, you get ordered removed. You actually leave 3% of the time. If you're a family group and you get ordered removed, you leave 6% of the time. If you're a single adult, you leave between 14 and 16% of the time. This administration is not detaining them because the same report says if you detain and you receive an order of removal, you're removed more than 99% of the time. Mm. They know this. The secretary has, that's his report, Homeland Security report. He knows 9 out of 10 will fail. He knows if they're detained, they'll be removed. So they, they even went a step further. Not only they open the border up, they're making it so these people will never leave. And people need to understand, we talked about 5 million crossing the border. The biggest, most successful year ICE had was in 2012, we removed 409,000 people. How the hell are we going to move? By the time he's out of office, it'll be 12 million. We can't possibly move him. And and so this administration knows they'll hang out long enough. They'll hide in the shadows, waiting for the next amnesty. Then they'll give amnesty. And this country has shown, once again, you can break the laws, hide out long enough, be successful hiding out. And we're going to give you something. We're never going to fix the border crisis if we st- if we if we don't stop rewarding local behavior. This administration knows this. Same data points I've given you. This isn't done in the blind, as you said earlier. This is on purpose. This is by design. Well, well, tell us what uh, what was the situation with C- Commissioner Chris Magnus, and, and why did they kind of tr- push him out? Well, you know what. I, 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 I have a theory. First of all, when they nominated him, I, I, I was very vocal. He was the worst pick they could have come up with because when he was the chief of police in Tucson, he had a standing order. The, the city of Tucson Police Department could not in any way cooperate with ICE or the Border Patrol. Even if they were in the city of Tucson looking for a public safety threat that was in the country illegally, they weren't allowed to work with them. He also attacked the Trump's border policies. He supported sanctuary cities and created sanctuary city in Tucson. And that's the guy you're going to put in charge for security. So, to, But they, they hired him because of, he had the same ideology as a lot of people in the administration did. I think, and like I say, if, if the secretary is telling the truth, which he's not, but if he's telling the truth, the border is secure and is closed, the magnitude got in the presidential rank award. Because apparently, done a pretty damn good job, right? Mm-hmm. They got rid of them, I think, because of one reason. They know oversight hearings are coming. And they want one less guy to be called in there. And look, they can still call him in there. I think re- regardless of Chris Magnus and me disagreeing with his border philosophy and illegal immigration philosophy, I think it would have been a man of character and, and, and told the truth under oath. I think they just got rid of somebody that's going to create a problem for him. That there's no other reason to get rid of them. I mean, if the border is truly secure, as the secretary said, under oath in front of Congress numerous times, the guy gets the guy should get an award and not get fired. Now, I've noticed. I remember. Uh, I think it was back in January when the the secretary was in the Arizona border, and the border agent turned their back on him. Is is it generally held that the border agents are very unhappy with the situation they're in right now? There's, there's, there's absolutely zero morale left in the Border Patrol. I've been down to the southern border 
14 times in the past year. I talked to hundreds of these guys. And they turned their back on him because he turned their back on them first. Um, they, they feel they've been abandoned by the secretary. They've been abandoned by the president of the United States. I mean, men and women, they're busting their backs every day, 24-7, working massive amounts of overtime. They got a record number of suicides because of the, the terrible things they're dealing with every day. And the secretary gets on national TV and says there's no crisis at the border. The border's closed. It's secure. Imagine these men and women working, you know, 16-hour shifts and, and in the processing center looking up at the TV screen and seeing their boss saying, we got no problem at the southern border. Look, and he threw the, the horse patrol under the bus. I, you know, I saw the video. When the horse patrol video first came out, I watched it here at my home. It took me five seconds to say, there's nothing wrong. I was in a border patrol. I know there was engagement. The officers did as they were trained. The horses performed as they were trained in crowd control, just like horses in Times Square are, tra are trained. The only ones that did anything wrong that day were the Haitians that entered the country illegally, which is a crime, ignored verbal commands from a federal officer, which is a felony, but no one talked about they were in the wrong. It was the border patrol agents. I think the secretary took the opportunity because he was getting beat up. Remember, they had 15,000 Haitians on the bridge. He was getting beat up. This was an opportunity for him to change the dynamics and change the talking points from his failures to the racist border patrol. And, and, and these men who are on the horse patrol to this day, even though the investigations show that they did not whip anybody, they're still not back to full duty. They're still sitting at a desk because they're looking to do something administratively to them, even though they're innocent of whipping. So that alone, whatever morale was left, which was pretty much zero, that destroyed them. Because the board played, especially when the story came out, that the secretary was briefed that it was a story before he went to the White House, stood at the White House podium and slandered these men. Knowingly slandered them that they were whipping people. So the board has no respect for them. They, they feel like they've been abandoned by not only him, but the president of the United States. So let's remember, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, his first speech, at the end of his speech, he said this. The last administration would watch children starve to death on the banks, banks of the Rio Grande did nothing about it. See, he's talking about the 20,000 men and women that wear that green uniform. Saved. Saved in one year over 8,000 lives, pulling children out of the river, pulling, you know, grown men and women out of the river, finding them stranded in the desert. They saved over 8,000 lives. And the president of the United States, the commander in chief, accused them of watching children starve to death and did nothing about it. He actually said that. I wanted to throw something at TV when he gave that speech. When, when these men and women strap a gun to their hip every day, put a Kevlar vest on, put their lives on the line. They had the commander in chief accuse them of watching children die, do nothing about it. Then he attacks the horse patrol and said they will pay for that. It's no wonder they have no respect for this leadership. They, they, they feel abandoned. And I can't blame them. Well, you know, our, our guest today, Tom Homan, has probably more perspective on this than, than anybody. Uh, he's worked across administrations. And what he has to say is something that's so important for the American people to listen to. You know, one of our founders, John Adams, talked about the importance of being well-informed and educated. He said that our system is based on a population that is well-informed and educated. The reason he said that is because people who are not well-informed are very easy to manipulate. So you can have people like the secretary who will come along and say, there's no problem at the border. The border is secure, even though your eyes tell you that there are thousands of people coming across, and they're coming from all over the world, and we have no idea who these people are. But we see the drug, we see the human trafficking, and he says, there's no problem. Well, you have to be pretty simplistic to believe that. You know, I want to ask you this question. If all of a sudden we had a responsible administration who cared about the safety of the American people, who cared about the safety of those people who are trying to come in here, and I don't blame them for trying to get in here, quite frankly, but what is, is there anything that can be done or is it just, are we, is it just curtains for us? 
Well, look, the, the biggest thing, Joe Biden knew exactly what he was doing during the campaign when he said he would put a moratorium on deportations, he would shut down detention, ICE detention, he, he, he'd award amnesty and DACA and, and free health care. When, when you make those types of promises to the entire world, they're going to come to the greatest country on earth. And like you said, I can't blame them either. When you make those type of promises, the most vulnerable people in the world are going to make that journey. And they can't cross the border without the use of the cartels, or the cartels will kill them. So, you know, th that's created this dangerous situation. But there, there's going to be things to be done. The Remain in Mexico program is a game changer. And people attack that program. But the Remain in Mexico program, people can still apply for asylum. They would just have to wait in Mexico to the hearing. And the thing that was great about it, President Trump, I sat in the Oval Office with him when I went over that 90% failed, but only 3 to 6% leave. And he said, so why do we keep releasing Tom? Why don't we detain him or keep him in Mexico with the hearing? And he came up with the Remain in Mexico program. And it worked. Some of the people that remained in Mexico, actually about 10 to 12 percent, actually got amnesty. Uh, in, I mean, uh, asylum, they came in, welcome to the United States, have, have a good life. But, you know, nearly 90 percent failed and they weren't entered, they didn't, weren't allowed to enter the United States. That way, you don't have this population here, they're here illegally. It was a great program. So they can still claim asylum, but they're going away to Mexico. And the U.S. government gave Mexico a lot of money under, under President Trump to make sure all taken care of. It worked. So yeah, the, the Remain in Mexico program, the third safe country agreements work great because asylum, people need to understand, asylum is you're escaping fear and persecution from your home government because your race, religion, political affiliation, or participation in a, in a, in a specific social group. So maybe you're, you're gay in, in this nation, you know, will kill you if you're gay. But that's what asylum is. Well, not that don't don't qualify for asylum. So, you know, it made sense to keep them in Mexico. But the third safe country agreement said this. Is, so if you leave Honduras and you get to Mexico, if you're claiming asylum, have you not escaped that fear and persecution from your homeland? You're not in the country anymore. You should claim asylum in Mexico. Right. And it showed it's really not about asylum. It's about getting to the United States. So, look, I think you turn the Trump policies back on. And the wall is important. Every place they build a border barrier, illegal immigration reduced, drug uh, uh, smuggling reduced. That's a fact. It's on the CBP website, even though the administration don't want to admit it. But here's the beauty about the wall. A lot of the children, a lot of the families can't go over that wall. Most of them can. Funnels them to a place where border patrol is there to take them and provide medical care. Look, Tom Homer is not anti-immigrant. Tom Homer is anti-immigration, illegal immigration, because in my 35 years, I've held dying children. I've held dead children. I've talked to girls as young as 10 years old who got raped multiple times. Illegal immigration is not a victimless crime. So if the wall funnels them to a uniform, a green uniform, that can give them medical care, that can you know, talk to them if they've been raped and get, get them medical services. Uh, a lot of these people are in bad shape uh, 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 physically. So they, they walk all through the Darien Gap in Panama. Walls work. Walls save lives. Walls decrease illegal immigration, but most importantly, walls save lives because it funnels them to where they can get help. Absolutely. They've worked for thousands of years. There's no reason why they would stop working now. But uh, what, what are the implications of uh, ending Title 42? You're going to see, you're going to see the increase in numbers uh, because now people know you won't be sent back under Title 42. Your chances of getting the United States are pretty damn good, and the chances of getting released are pretty damn good. And now least, the U.S. government is going to put you on an airplane to a city of your choice at taxpayer expense. And I've seen it every time I'm down to Rio Grande Valley. I, I get on an airplane to Rio Grande Valley to get my connecting to uh, Dallas to get the connecting back to D.C. And every plane I take RGV is over half full of uh, illegal aliens with a taxpayer-funded airline ticket to the city of their choice. And so now that Title 42 is coming in, more are going to come. And what's that mean? Rather than 70% of agents off the line, there'll be 90% of agents off the line. What's that mean? More illegal immigration, more fentanyl, more no inspected terrorists, more gang members. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's, the Border Patrol is already overwhelmed, and those men and women, I don't know how they're going to handle it. And I know they're sending the air marshals down there, but you know, everybody they send down, what this administration has done from day one, I, I, because I always ask, this administration, can you name one thing you've done to slow the flow? Can you name one enforcement action you've taken to slow the flow? Only thing you're doing is you send more resources down there, now they're sending air marshals down there to do what? 
to process quicker and release quicker because if they can prevent overcrowding, control the optics, then they can say there's no crisis here. Absolutely. Well, you've certainly done your part, and uh, you know I want to thank you. You know, there are those who try to denigrate our country and talk about how horrible we are and that we're systemically racist, and on and on it goes. Well, if it were so bad, why are these people trying to get in here? We're the most giving country in the world. We welcome more refugees in this country than any country in the world. Matter of fact, we welcome almost more refugees than every other country combined. We're the most giving country in the world. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, people need to open their eyes and open their ears. Uh, don't believe those people who say, don't believe your eyes, don't believe your ears, don't believe your heart. Just listen to us. We'll tell you what to think. It must hurt to be that stupid. We don't want stupid people. We want people who use common sense. That's what made America into a great nation. And, uh, Tom, I want to thank you for the part that you played in making us into a great nation. And, folks, don't give up. Don't give up on America. There are a lot of us who have common sense. I hope you will join the ranks. And I'll be back in a minute with my closing thoughts and prescription. We want to thank Tom Holman. Well, that was a fascinating discussion with Tom Holman, who probably knows more about border security and the implications of it than anybody else. And, uh, I hope you learned something from listening to this program today. You know, one of the things that uh, really struck home is is the issue of human slavery, uh, human trafficking. There are more slaves in the world today than there have ever been in the history of the world, and human trafficking is largely responsible for that. And the problem is it's abundant, and it's right under your nose. And for your assignment this week, I would encourage you to, to go to the, the ICE uh, webpage. And they have some primers there on signs that you should be looking for. And uh, if, in fact, uh, you see those things happening, uh, who to notify? Think about the lives of these people, particularly the, the children, who are just being brutalized multiple times a day, they have no life. And we can't just sit quietly by and ignore that while we enjoy the pleasures of life. We all have to be involved. So please get involved. Know what the signs are. And let somebody know if that is going on near you. And that's our program for the day. And uh, I hope you will uh, sign on. Uh, we have multiple ways that you can get there. It's free on Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you, get, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you don't miss an episode. Rate us, review us, tell your friends and neighbors about us, tell your family. And uh, we need to spread common sense. We need to make common sense common once more. Until next week, treasure the cornerstones. Remember, faith, liberty, community, and life. See you next week.